If you're writing a web app or some sort of back-end API or service, which, let's be honest, if you're shipping Gleam, you probably are, then there's a good chance you're querying a database somewhere. And if you're doing that, you need to be using Squirrel. But what is Squirrel? I hear you ask. Squirrel is a code generation library for Gleam apps that makes working with your database not only super easy, but fully type safe. And of course, it brings a whole host of other benefits too. So let's go nuts. But before we look too much at Squirrel though, let's see what a database interaction normally looks like in Gleam. Consider an imaginary database we're using to store data for our Pokedex app. We have an enum of Pokemon types and a Pokemon table with an ID, the Pokemon's name and some possible types. Here's an example function that uses the Pog library to fetch a list of three Pokemon's IDs and names from a database filtered by type. It's a fairly standard game. We write a parameterized SQL query inline, set our return parameter and then create a decoder to turn our output data back into a Gleam type. And when we run this against our database, we get the expected result. But there are a few issues here. Firstly, we might not get syntax highlighting for the SQL query in our editor. Some IDEs are pretty good and can pick out SQL when they see it, but this isn't universal. Secondly, most of this code is boilerplate. And while this code looks fine, I deliberately kept this example simple so it would fit on my slide. Larger, more complex queries are gonna be a bit nightmarish. Lastly, and most importantly, as long as our types are correct, we're not going to notice any problems in our SQL query until we actually try to run it. You also can't guarantee your query and decoder are always in sync. If you change the order of columns of the same type, you could quite easily forget to update your decoder and end up with incorrect data. Both of these are integer columns, and you'd get very confused if suddenly lots of Pokemon you consider to be equally cool aren't and have the same IDs. This one you can get around with decent testing, but mocking database data can take some time and takes you out of the flow of application development. Enter Squirrel. Squirrel is a Gleam CLI tool that generates type safe queries for interacting with your database, reducing the amount of boilerplate you have to write and keeping you from going nuts. Let me show you how it works. Install Squirrel as a dev dependency by running Gleam add dash dash dev Squirrel. Next, you'll need to write the SQL queries for your application. But this time, instead of writing them inline in your code, your queries go in .sql files in your source directory. Specifically, they need to be in a SQL directory. This can live anywhere in your source, and you can have multiple SQL directories in one project. For our example, we'll put our query in a get coolest pokemon.sql file under source slash pokedex slash sql. Be careful though, each .sql file will only be turned into one Gleam function, so make sure any queries you want to run separately are in different files. The way Squirrel works is by connecting to your database to check that your queries are valid and to get type information for both your queries parameters and its return values. In order to do this, you need to make sure you have connection details available in your environment. Squirrel only works with Postgres databases and you can either provide a database URL NVAR or use the default Postgres environment variables. And if you've got all that set up, you can run Gleam run -m squirrel to generate your beautiful new code. Squirrel will generate Gleam modules called sql.gleam in your source directory alongside any SQL directories. These modules will contain functions and types for all the queries Squirrel could find in the accompanying directory. In our case, we have a SQL file with a get coolest Pokemon function, as well as a get coolest Pokemon row record type. This is what we'll get as the output of our query function. One other thing that's really cool is that not only has Squirrel recognized that we have an enum for our Pokemon type, but it's generated a Gleam type for it with a constructor for each variant, making this more type safe than our code from earlier. The generated code takes care of converting our Gleam type to a string to send this to our database. And if we add a type column to our output, Squirrel will generate a decoder for our new type too. Now, from our code, we can just call the generated function and and voila, we're good to go. My favorite part about all of this is that you can validate your SQL queries at build time. Instead of waiting until runtime to find out you've left a trailing comma in your query, you can rely on Squirrel to let you know when something goes wrong and you'll even get gorgeous error messages. Oh, and if you're running in CI, you can run Squirrel with the dash dash check flag to validate that all of your query functions are up to date. Of course, Squirrel isn't perfect, but it is brilliant. And before I tell you about Squirrel's flaws, I want to tell you about something else that's brilliant. This video sponsor. If you've been on the internet at all in the last few years, you already know about Brilliant. As a refresher, Brilliant is a learning platform that's a little different. Instead of just being fed tutorial after tutorial, with Brilliant, you learn by doing. With thousands of interactive lessons in maths, 
data analysis, programming, and AI. Applying your lessons is the most effective way to learn, and Brilliant lets you do this by building up your understanding from first principles. This method of learning has proven to be up to six times more effective than lecture videos, and Brilliant's courses are all designed by experts from MIT, Google, and more. The focus on problem solving will really work your brain muscles, teaching you to be a better thinker, not just a good memorizer. Brilliant has a host of programming content, and I particularly like their Thinking in Code series. It's helpful to make sure you've got the right mindset when you're learning new ways of working, like learning functional programming for the first time with Gleam. To try out everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash Isaac Harris Holt, or scan the QR code on screen, or you can click the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. So why wait? Start off 2025 strong and get learning. Now, back to the video. I love Squirrel, but there are a few things you need to know when using it. First and foremost, like I mentioned earlier, Squirrel only supports Postgres and there are no plans to add additional database support. That said, you should be using Postgres anyway, so... Also, with enums, Squirrel will convert snake case enum variants to Pascal case named constructors for Gleam, but it won't do any transformation to make sure that the output is valid Gleam code. So, if you have a variant that starts with a number, you won't be able to convert it into a Gleam type safely, and Squirrel will fail validation and refuse to generate the code. You will get a nice error message though. Finally, you do need to have a database running when you run Squirrel. This is generally fine during development as you'll have a database running to test your application anyway. Just make sure your migrations are all up to date. But that's about it for now. If you want to learn more about Squirrel, I'll leave links to the package as well as an introductory article written by Squirrel's fabulous author Jack in the description. And if you're hankering for more Gleam web dev goodness, why not check out my video on Gleam's premier web framework, Lustre. You'll find that video on the left of your screen. Or if you fancy bowing down to the algorithm gods, YouTube's recommendation is on the right. See ya.